Right then, they don't make songs like this anymore. I'm going to play it to you in a second and break down exactly what I did and how I made it. If you've already heard it, skip a couple of minutes ahead, but if not, stick around, see what you think. Okay, I'm going to stop it there because it repeats a second verse slash bridge and then goes back into another chorus. So let's take a quick look at what's going on. This is the project. This is how I opened it. As always, red is drums, green is guitar, brown is bass, purple is synth, light blue is lead vocals, and this dark blue here is backing vocals. If I press the H button, you'll see all the tracks that I've hidden. On this occasion, not many. We have the Drum 707 kit, which I bounced all out to audio, made more sense. And then we have the vocals that I tuned and processed hiding up there as well. So this song started with a guitar idea, which is the very first thing that you actually hear. And I'll play that for you right now. And this guitar is heavily inspired by Genesis. Think of the song, I Can't Dance. Think of Money for Nothing. Uh, I think it's Dire Straits, that one. That's the kind of guitar sound that I was inspired by. A little bit of Brian Adams as well. I absolutely love that style of guitar playing. It's kind of, it's rocky, but it still sits in the realm of pop really nicely. But it's not so heavy that you would think it's an actual rock song or a metal song or something like that. So really, really nice. And the trick with the guitar is not to actually play too low. And when you play these sorts of riffs, you're not playing full power chords. You're actually taking away the lowest string and then you're playing the, the power chord. So that's how that was played. And it was an idea that I had knocking around in my mind for a few days. And I was so inspired by this thing that I wanted to just get it down. So the first thing I recorded was this guitar. It's going through Guitar Rig. The preset that I'm using is called Smooth Cream. <laughs> Whack name, but there we go. And I think this uh, matched cabinet here, matched cabinet pro plugin, it was a bit up into the room here, which makes it sound a bit more roomy. I'll play that to you. Really cool. But again, because I'm going for that tight pop sound, I just took it all the way down to just the cabinet, no room sound. And so you get a very dry tone. On top of that, I have chorus because I put chorus on nearly everything. And that is honestly just for me what allows me to use minimal instruments. I add some chorus and it makes the sound bigger. It fills up the stereo field. So it sounds great. I then added RC20. And I like to do this on most of my guitars. This really makes a huge difference. So what you do is you apply some distortion on the crunch setting. And then you just select this mid frowny curve mode here and turn the tone down right take away some of the bottom end and i add a smidge of kind of bit crushing to the top and this changes everything so listen to it with now without you see how it's lost its life i do that on almost every guitar that i use now and it just yeah, changes everything. 
That is the guitar for the entirety of the song that plays all the way through. The only exception is if you listen to it just before, there is one little riff, which I play right here. Just playing a slightly different riff. It's a variation of the original. The harmonic rhythm is quicker. So everything is just double speed in terms of when the chords change. And then the only other thing guitar wise is towards the end here. Just to thicken out, I play the same riff, but I do it just a little bit lower, like lower power chords on the guitar, just to thicken it up. And that sounds like this. When you add that in with the original riff. Just thickens everything up. The preset on one of them is called Little Jimmy's Wing. It's the Hot Plex Cabinet. That sounds great. And then the next one is a Tweedman, Raven Rocker. There we go. I think I took the reverb off both of those again. Wanted that really tight, dry sound. I took the chorus plugin off. I muted it on both because I didn't want the wide sound because I was panning them left and right. So that is the guitars and that makes up the entire song. Let's dive into just some of the synth textures that I've got going on because they're some of the first things that you hear when the song starts playing. And I have this little synth impact here, which sounds like this. Again, I didn't want a uh, like cymbal. I didn't want anything too harsh. And I wanted something that would just fade into the distance, kind of lasted a lifetime, sounded like eternity. So this one, the preset is 33 electric piano. The actual instrument itself is a Prophet 5, like that. And on that, I added a ton of reverb, sorry, delay, called um, Comeback Kid by Baby Auto. So this is a, a delay plugin. And then on top of that, we added some Valhalla to give it that epic spaciness, 11 seconds of that, actually. There you go. Just to give it that epicness and then yeah some uh mixing right some EQ and compression there is then a second lead part which comes in just after this one which sounds like this again tons of delay but not loads of reverb on it so you should be all right with that it's not going to eat too much into and make it sound too spacey so wanted to reduce that so again come back kid on there uh, we've got the effect rack, just with a bit of a decapitator on there. And then my usual virtual mix rack for some EQ and compression. The plugin that I'm using, I want to say it's the same one. No, it's slightly different. It's 28 synth harp. And again, the instrument is a Juno. I try and use vintage synths almost all the time, especially in my own songs. I, I, I kind of feel like that's my sound, my signature sound. But also, I just think they sound so great. They're so effective. The other thing that I add as well, just as another texture in the beginning, which is scattered all throughout, as you can see on this track here, is my vocal verb. This is a very Post Malone type thing to do. So it really modernizes the sound, even though they're quite old style sounding riffs. Adding a bit of this really brings it up to date. And that's all it is, right? That is so simple. I've just got my usual kind of recording chain on it, which is just a bit of EQ, uh, sorry, a little bit of compression and auto-tune. And then I've got my Valhalla. And again, just this is just the stock uh, preset when you open it up, left it on, and it sounds amazing. Uh, let's have a quick look at the bass because this is a crucial part. I'll look at my vocals in a minute, but I'll just mute them. The bass, oh, I love this bass sound. This is one of my favorites. It's made up of four instruments. And I'm just going to solo it here. And I'm just going to turn off this track spacing plugin. Basically, this is uh, making the bass duck whenever the kick hits so that they don't clash and interfere. So I'm just going to turn that off so we've got no ducking. But listen to this. <sighs> oh my gosh. It's so cool and unique. I absolutely love it. And I was inspired to make this sound because I was thinking of Michael Jackson and 
when he was talking about the bass for Smooth Criminal, I think it was, he wanted a really particular sound. He took an, a sample of a piano and pitched it way down on the keyboard. Or the um, the synth player did that. Um, I always forget the name of him, but absolutely amazing. And it sounded so cool, so unique, and, and really and, and introduced some really interesting timbres and tones, which just I just absolutely love the sound of. So let's break down the sound. The first one at the top here is Heaviosity. And this is a sinful clicker bass. Uh, this is kind of like my little secret weapon, Heaviosity. They've just got some really great, solid, beefy sounds in every way. If you want something a little bit more edgy, this is how this sounds. Huh. I mean, even that on its own is crazy, just like this massive 808 sub. I then added some isotope trash, the clip control, distortion setting, and just blended that in to my liking, to my taste. The second part of the bass sound, if we move down here, is Analog Lab. Again. And this is a clav. A low one. So I added some chorus and some phaser, and I made sure that the tone was nice and high. And I just played around with some of these settings down here. When I'm making something, I try not to get too hung up on the technical fine details. I will literally just chop and change and move these knobs around and just see what works, what sounds good to my ear. And so I ended up on this one. Again, using a low clav, it gives that kind of slappy sound, like you, you, you've got a slap bass in there. It's honestly so, so nice. The next sound, this is the Michael Jackson thing, the smooth criminal. I took a piano, just a standard um, grand piano from Analog Lab, just the American initial preset, and I just played that really, really low. If you play really down low here, you know, that's it, it goes that low. So it's really, really cool. So you can play around with the different sounds of that. That's super fun. Had that, and then finally we've got, I think, a bass bass, <laughs> which is, I think, a Moog or Moog. Yeah, it's a, it's the mini plugin, and that sounds like this. It's kind of adding that acid electronic sound, which we don't have. We kind of have the interesting tones from the clav and the piano. And that's the thing with this, like they're adding the interesting tone. If I play just this Moog bass and the 808, it sounds nice, but it sounds quite similar to something you might have heard before. If I just play the clav and the piano and then add them all in, it just adds so much interest. It creates a really thick, interesting sound. And then just to top the entire bus off, so all these tracks are going into one bus, into one channel, I added some additional decapitator and then sound toys. Just a very low mix, number one there, because uh, this thing, uh, Devil Lock, sorry, the Devil Lock Destroyer, this thing just crushes everything. So that sounds really, really great. And that is the bass sound, and again, it doesn't need to be doing anything complex because the sound is so amazing. So just let that sound sing out. Um, now, I realized I've not actually looked at the drums yet. So let's take a quick look at the drums in this chorus section here. I'll play them soloed. I absolutely love the drums in this. They're big, punchy, minimal, and use really great and interesting sounds. The foundation of the kit is made up of that 707 that I showed you before, which sounds like this. This is kind of the starting loop. Okay, just to give a little bit of groove, a little bit of bass. The kick is made up of two samples. We've got this uh, Fulton Verb Reserve which has loads of that kind of 80s character to it. And then we have a second kick here. And that's got like this really nice high end. So when you put them both together, 
you get a really nice vintage sounding kick that is super super punchy the rim this is kind of giving that groove it's kind of placing the groove by landing on the two and four of the beat these toms are also some of my favorite as well listen to these toms oh just so cool so vintage just awesome incredible in my mind we then also have let me just check what these are oh yeah a little crash here a crash and actually some percussion in there as well and you'll hear them sort of here as well like that and they're just adding just little bits of ear candy in the actual drum groove and then the same with this little clap here this just adds a little bit more when the chorus comes in. You can see that this doesn't actually play during the verse section. It's just the rim that plays up here. And then I add this clap in just to give it some more beef. Beef Wellington. <laughs> I was going to say some, some more beef and some welly. And I thought of beef Wellington. So um, UK champions, you know. Um, on the actual drum bus itself, we've got a transient shaper. We've got some virtual tape machines just here slate digital classic some parallel compression we've got some additional compression some clipping this is the thing that gives you loud punchy drums but without clipping your mix you can see all the red is what it's clipping and reducing in volume and then we've got a couple more things as well i've got this little compressor here where every time the kick hits in this band it reduces the hi-hats in this top band here so here see how it goes down every time it clicks so it just means that there's nothing getting in the way of the top end of the kick here uh i've also got a little snare which comes in in the post chorus so when i sing the i know you when i do that and that is a fat snare sound like this oh I just love AT sounds, man. They're just anything with that kind of non-linear reverb just sounds amazing to me. So sample one. This is kind of adding a bit of meaty girth to the sound. And then we have the top end closer to that of a piccolo snare. And then when you add them together, you get the full spectrum being covered in the snare sound. And that comes in again, just in that post chorus, just to add a little bit more punch there. And that is all the instruments. Certainly that make up the main foundation of the track, the bass, the guitar, and those drums. There's only one other synth, which I add towards the end here. And this is like a, if you've ever listened to Extreme Ways by Moby, uh, it sounds exactly like it. And not because I intentionally ripped it off, but because that was the preset that I picked. I just pulled it from random. And it sounds, yeah, Screamer there. And it sounds like this. It just goes up and down. It's amazing. But when you add that in to the end, oh. Just, just crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Right. And then there is just this little instrumental moment here leading into the final chorus. So after I've sang my second verse, we have this moment Right, and what that is, I wanted it to sound like I was outside a club because the whole point of the song, lyrically, is that it's about being, like walking into a club thinking you're it, right? You're, everyone's looking at you, right? You're the star of the show, but you get a bit too drunk, you get thrown out because actually you're not the star of the show, but you just, you're giving it the big end because you've had a couple on a night out. So you've been thrown out the club uh, and we've got, what the chorus is playing and some crowd party waller. And I just filtered that out with some RC20, just took away a lot of the high end, just at the bottom here, you can see, and the bottom end. 
There is also, yep, the crowd party wallow, which is there. I've also added in a little bit, is it here? Oh, no, this is just some additional crowd party drunkenness. And then I add this little car. Can you hear that? It's accelerating away. It actually just acts a bit like a riser. It was supposed to be a cool texture, but it just sounds like a riser if you're listening in context. And every now and then I throw a little talking moment in the song and it's just me going, oh, come on, man. That's it. Just to make it sound like I'm talking to the bouncer saying, oh, come on, man, don't throw me out. So that was fun. Speaking of vocals, let's take a quick look at what's going on here. I've got my main vocal recording chain. And all my lead vocals, I just put in one bus here because it means I'm just doing way less processing. The processing I do here, because I only have to do it once. If I did it on every single track here, then it would eat up a lot more CPU. So I'm just going to close this tr uh, bus track for now. And again, I do my usual auto-tuning, melodining, just to get the vocals sitting nice, real clean. And then I added some parallel compression, some revival shimmer for some top end. And then I just wanted a bit more beefiness in the vocal by adding some 200 hertz there. So that's nice. Some soothe to take away any harsh frequencies. Some Kramer tape. And this is actually for the slap back delay. So I'll play this. I walk into the bar like I own it. She walks in the hot boots with the fur. So that's adding that really cool slap back delay, which for this song sounded perfect. It was vintage sounding, but also just gave it a cool edgy sound, which you know everybody loves. And then to finish off, we add some fresh air. And this is a free plugin. It's one of the best. Just 4% in the mid-air, 4% in the high-air, and this just adds so much. If I get rid of all these plugins, here is the dry voice. I walk into the bar like I own it. There is actually already some EQ and compression on there because that's just how I record it. And then... I walk into the bar like I own it. the plugins on. She walks in the hot boots with the fur. Just way more punchy and just way more dramatic. Love it. Same the chorus over here, if I have a quick look at what's going on. Cause I'm somebody, not nobody, let's somebody whiskey tonight. Harmonically, this is a really interesting song as well. I'm not going to go too deep into that, but it's kind of borders on a major and a minor. You would probably say the key is major predominantly. No, I'd probably say it's predominantly minor, but the the tonic so the the minor tonic you kind of use a major chord every now and then as well and that's where you can get these really cool interesting melodies uh i think julie Lipa does a fair bit of them mark ronson people like that so i absolutely love that melody and then we have Good. i know you want to be me i know you want what i've got i i love when i sing at that range i can access kind of a bit of distortion in my voice and so when you're writing songs it's really good to know what it is that you are trying to achieve vocally so i knew i wanted this to be an energetic loud song i wanted to get those kind of raspy tones out so i wrote in a key where i'm sitting at the top of my the, the higher end of my my chest voice and that's where i got these tones again inspired from i can't dance genesis right i, I heard his vocal and i just think it's so cool and so awesome so that's what we've got going on here. Um, and then let's have a look. In the second verse, we add some uh, some of my famous little... It's not even mine. I can't even uh, lay claim to it. It's more of a Michael Jackson thing and, and people like that. Yeah, little hard lips. In the second verse, I draw out my notes. So in the first verse... They're quite short and punchy. In the second verse, I draw them out massively. And so there's a real nice contrast between the two. And yeah, just really, really effective in my mind. Uh, that is that. Let's have a quick look at the BV bus here. So the main thing with the BVs is, as you saw before, we've got this kind of verby uh, vocal that's going all the way through. 
And then we have just like a little vocal reverse here. And then we just primarily have doubles and one, two part harmonies. So this is my little harmony track here. Let's listen. I'm somebody, nobody, somebody risky tonight. <laughs> so that's with the really fun melody up here. Nobody. Cause I'm somebody, no, nobody, let somebody whiskey tonight. Now you'll hear obviously in isolation the BVs are all chopped up. That is obviously very intentional. I don't want any sibilance to carry over because that's being taken up by my lead vocal. And I just want them to be really, really tight with the lead vocal. So I just chop out any unnecessary gaps. You won't hear them in context of the mix. So it it just cleans it up. It makes it sound so much better. We then have the doubles in the chorus. Here. And that is just, I'm just doubling up kind of the, the beginnings of the word. And then that kind of what I've got lyric there, because that's, that's a bit of a moment. It's supposed to be quite epic. And so these BVs, I wanted to treat them as like an impact. And so rather than just, treating them the same as the lead and then just dulling them down a bit. I treated them relatively similar, but then I added some of their own verbs. So they're basically in their own space. And then I added some additional distortion to capitate it here. And I went quite extreme with it. So I think this is doing quite a lot of heavy lifting here. If I take it away, it's nice. Add this, just adds a lot of brightness, makes it sound really punchy, especially when the lead vocal comes in in that chorus. Sounds great. Later on in the chorus, we then have this. So again, I alter my melody. I go up into my head voice, add some nice variation. And this is where I harmonize with the BV bus here. Let me just uh, play them on their own. So Yeah, just, that's a simple three-part harmony, nice and easy. And then I basically repeat them in the final chorus here as well. And then there's a couple more harmonies in the verse here. So nothing too notable, just singing away, getting lost in the zone. When I'm recording them, I tend to just put my headphones on and then just kind of go for it. I'm quite good at picking out harmonies, definitely practiced. I was never that good in the beginning, but... We then got this song. On my master chain, because I master in session as well, I'll just quickly jump over that. We've got some clipping, we've got some soothe, we've got some tape machines, we've got a bus compressor, we've got some fusion violet EQ, which is lovely, add some top end. We're just widening the stereo image a little bit. We're putting a little hi-fi compressor on it just to tame the highs. Oxford inflator, goated plugin, ozone nine, and then finishing off with F FGX2 which just really brings it up to volume. So that's the song VIP. Hey, so just want to jump on here. I made a little mistake when I was recording this. So I've got a brand new community group that you can join absolutely for free. Uh, just go to luketarget.com. I'll link it down below. There is a free tier and there's also a couple of paid tiers as well. If you want access to the sounds in this video from this song, then full transparency, they are featured as part of the pay tier it's only a few quid a month so check it out and if you like it you'll get continuous new packs and sounds every single month uh, otherwise you can just enjoy all the other bits and pieces i put on behind there uh, as a music artist so hope you enjoy <laughs> 